The health and damage mechanics of Hideous Destructor are the reason why many people can't come to enjoy the mod, or refuse to give it a fair shot from the start. It's obviously going to be deeper than Doom's vanilla damage calculations, but once we take a quick walk of the core health mechanics in play, you'll see that it's not as complicated as its reputation would have you believe. As your injuries stack up, your ability to move and shoot start to fall off. After taking a really nasty hit, it's common for your aim to shake for a minute, and I'd recommend taking a breather until you can recover well enough to continue fighting. For this first lesson, I'm going to set it up similar to how many of you are going to be playing Hideous Destructor for the first time. Wait. Let's start right here. When you get hurt, you will take health damage, just like normal Doom. But then some new factors come into play. Depending on how badly you get hit, you take damage not just to your health, but to your maximum health limit. Without sufficient armor or magic in your system, chances are you're going to start bleeding as well. You can check if you're bleeding by equipping the medkit or the bandaging tool. The more this cross is bouncing, the more severe you're bleeding. Stopping the bleeding is the first thing to do here. You won't start to recover until your bleeding stops. You'll be doing this quite a bit, get used to this process. Once the bleeding stops, you're going to be stunned, which will stunt your movement speed for just a moment. Then you'll start regenerating health back up to your maximum health limit, which is affected by three types of damage that reduce your total overall max health down from 100. Those types of damage are burns and wounds, and as of the making of this video, they aren't too hard to treat with the med kit. The first feature of the med kit is the built-in scanner that lets you see your current medical state with counters for open bleeding, temporary damage you're going to recover from, wounds, and burns. The scan is not accurate while wearing armor or moving. The med kit uses nanogel compounds that pull flesh back together and remove your wounds. To use it, take your armor off, look down, and just start stitching yourself closed. The gel stops the bleeding and starts to restore your maximum health value. The only caveat is the pain. This medicine is restoring tissue and muscle over time, which does not feel good at all. You'll flinch in pain the entire time the medicine is restoring your maximum HP. Burns can be treated with the med kit as well. Take your armor off, look down, and apply by holding the zoom key while firing the med kit. Take this slow. The burn pain comes all at once and causes a small amount of health damage, but it removes a portion of burns instantly and lets you start healing to your restored max health value. Hey Nox, you said there were three types of permanent damage. You only listed two. Yeah, I did. Aggravated damage is weird. It doesn't get inflicted by many things and the medkit scanner doesn't measure it. The two things I know that cause aggravated damage are bale fire from knights, barons, and cubes, and so much of the rapid damage and recovery and damage again that happens when you put berserk in your body. Well then how do you tell if you have it? Unfortunately, it's an educated guessing game. You have to have taken enough aggravated damage that when you're fully recovered, all of your wounds and burns are done and you're full at health, you can tell that you're more damaged and more fucked up than your medkit scan says you are. Nox, that is vague and unhelpful. Yeah, I know it's vague and unhelpful. It's not a bug. Getting footage of it is a pain in the ass. It'd be like three hours long. If you don't have a med kit or don't want to flinch from second flesh, you can stop your bleeding the old-fashioned way. There's some shortcomings that make the med kit stronger. When you're using the bandage tool, you can't move. It doesn't restore your maximum health. And the bandages aren't permanent. The upside here is that you don't have to take off your armor to stop any bleeding, it doesn't leave you flinching after you stop the bleeding, and it doesn't weigh anything. Yo, Keep in mind, it. you can also use this on friends. Cool. Nice. Stim packs can be quickly injected and provide a number of small, useful boosts, including slowed bleeding, a boost to your health regeneration rate, an increase to your stamina and carry weight, and very reduced stun effects from stamina loss or pain. They're a very powerful tool and part of an entire playstyle for the game, 
But if you inject one too close to the last dose, your heart explodes. The stim packs are important for our next topic. I mentioned this earlier. This is the part where we fix ourselves. You get knocked down in combat, and now we understand all of the concepts enough to get back up again. Taking enough health damage incapacitates you. You're near death, probably bleeding as well. We follow standard healing procedure as best we can. Stop the bleeding and recover enough to stand back up. You barely have enough strength to move your limbs and crawl. The shock and pain of injecting medkit gel on your own is too much for your system to handle right now, so you're going to have to stop the bleeding with bandages. When the bleeding stops, healing and stamina recovery can begin. You can sit patiently and recover, but more often than not, there's still going to be danger around. Use your change fire mode button to cycle between your items. You can use stim packs or berserk serum, or you can file a complaint. Stims provide a bit of HP and a boost to stamina recovery. This makes them the best tool for getting up from an in-cap. It's not instant, but it certainly helps. Do not overdose. Once your shaking stops, you probably have the strength to get yourself back up. Just hit your jump key and dust yourself off. Recovering from in-cap is a weird process, and it's going to take a little bit of practice and repetition before it becomes routine. Considering all the fighting you do, it's a safe bet that you'll lose blood, and your blood level affects your stamina, which in turn starts bleeding into a few other systems. The height of these bars near your heartbeat monitor indicate your general blood level. The smaller and lower they are, the lower your blood level. The medkit scanner will let you know how much blood you have left in fancy mathematical units, but anything less than a 0.3 is a bad time, and you'll want to find a second blood kit.